Hey, and welcome once again to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. My name is Mike Freeman, and today we're continuing in the Gospel of John, John chapter 5, looking at this interaction between Jesus and the religious leaders after he heals this man who has been lame for 38 years. Now, our text uh, yesterday, we saw that Jesus, he, he doubles down on his claims of equality with God, and he actually reveals that he is the ultimate judge that he will judge everyone in all of humanity, either to a resurrection of life or a resurrection of eternal judgment. And, and so then the, the next part of Jesus, uh, as he teaches, is he, he actually reveals why he has such authority. Now, he's already actually revealed it. He is divine. He is the Son of God. But, but he, now he starts to give all of these, really a resume or these credentials, these witnesses that, that line up and show that he actually, he is the one who has this authority. So let's jump in. We're going to start in verse 30 and we're going to go through verse 35. Jesus continues. He says, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Here's what he says. He says, listen, I'm not judging based on some flippant and capricious idea in my mind. I'm not judging because I, you know, I had a bad day and so I just want to be a mean guy. No, Jesus, he says, I, I don't do anything on my own. My judgment aligns perfectly with the heavenly father. Why? Because he is in perfect unity with the heavenly father. He says, I do the will of the one who sent me. There is not, there is not even a sliver of disunity, a civil sliver of discord between the Father and the Son and the Spirit. Verse thirty-one, he says, "If I alone bear witness about myself, my testimony is not true. But there is one who bears witness about me, and I know that the testimony that he bears about me is true." He says, "Okay, listen, you don't want to hear just my own testimony, although I just healed a man that has been lame for thirty-eight years. I mean, let's just read between the lines for a moment here." He says, "Okay, you don't want just the testimony of one person. Okay, there, there's another. Who is this other?" He says. You sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. You guys went and you saw John. You heard him. He, he told you the truth. Verse 34, not that the testimony that I receive is from man, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He, John, was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. He says, listen, you guys went to John. You heard his testimony. He says, I don't even need John's testimony. I don't need the testimony of a man, but, but he was sent. You have his testimony and I'm saying these things so that you'll be saved. I mean, listen to Jesus and his, his heart for these hardened religious leaders to be saved, to trust in him, to turn in faith. He says, you guys went to John. He was this bright, burning, shining light. He was, he was a beacon of truth. You went to him and you even rejoiced in his light for a little while. For a little while. But then John starts calling them out. He starts uh, asking them, who, who warned you of this coming judgment? What do, what do, you, think, what do you think you're doing here? You, you, need, to, you need to take the, the ax to the root. You can't just uh, do these external actions and act like you're, you're repentant. He rejoiced in his light for a little while, but you're not, you're not ultimately trusting in the word of the witness that pointed to me. You're not, you're not actually believing in who I am. Ah, this, is, this is so powerful. This is so important. See, trusting in Christ, following Christ, you can trust in Christ and your external actions can look the exact same way as someone who is only only trusting in their own good works, but they're behaving in, in almost the exact same way. See, Jesus, he's, he's reminding us that we have to believe in this testimony, not just, not just have these, these external actions, not just do good things, but believe that Christ is the Savior. And I want you to see today, here's the ancient way for our modern day. I want you to see Jesus' desire for, for people to come and be saved. I want you to see his desire for you to turn away from your self-righteousness, 
to turn away from reliance on your good works, to turn away from your reliance on your moral judgment and your moral superiority, to turn away from anything in and of yourself where you say, well, look at how good I am, to turn away from all that, trust the testimony of John, more importantly, trust the testimony of Jesus in who he is and what he has done. See, our ancient way for our modern day is it's just this, maybe it's a checkup for us to, to make sure we're not trusting in our own self-righteousness. To make sure we're not trusting in our own good works, but rather we are trusting in Christ. We're trusting in the witness of the word. We're trusting in the witness of, of John. We're trusting in the witness of Jesus' miracles. We're going to see more witnesses in the next few days as well. But let's make sure we are trusting in Christ. You know, I, I imagine there are times when you listen to this and you say, this is similar to what I've recently heard. These themes run through all of John and, and they confront us over and over again with, with a simple, pure, and genuine faith. Flee to Christ, run to Christ, trust in Christ, believe in Christ. Now, this is, this is the ultimate of the ancient ways for the modern days. To trust in the sinless Savior, to trust in his sacrificial death, to trust in his victorious resurrection and ascension, to trust that he is your only hope. This is our ancient way for our modern day.